Welcome to Module 5 of the Environment Agency's BIM eLearning. This is your fifth instalment of the BIM eLearning module syllabus. This eLearning module is presented in sections, with each section covering a specific theme. At the end of the module, there is a multiple choice test, which you have to pass to complete the module. In this module, we will focus on the visualisation aspect to enable you to identify and scope the appropriate use of visualisation, bringing together a variety of different types of information that will aid you in your decision making. We will be looking at the key differences between a model and a visualisation, their purpose and uses to convey information to a target audience. You will also learn about the value of models and different uses of visualisations, including the variety of visualisations that can be created. After that, we will explain the process of creating a federated model and the importance of exchange formats for sharing the right information during different project stages. We will reintroduce you to the visualisation selection tool and demonstrate how it can guide decisions and benefit project delivery. We will also highlight the difference between clash avoidance and clash detection processes and explain their importance to quality assurance and efficient project delivery. Following that, we will provide insights into how models and data can be reused for different purposes and how to leverage the visualisation selection tool to help articulate information to different audiences. Finally, we will show you how different discipline models are federated and reviewed in Navisworks. We will explain how this model review process enhances project coordination and how it supports management and resolution of project issues. In Objective 1, we will learn about the differences between a model and a visualisation and the types of visualisations we can create to effectively convey information to different stakeholders. Consider an iceberg as an example to understand the contribution of models to visualisation and they represent reusable data. The visible part of the iceberg above the water is the visualisation, which only represents 10% of the iceberg, whereas 90% is beneath the surface, which represents the data and value in the models. A visualisation conveys specific complex information that translates into something more comprehensible under the surface. In some cases, pre-existing visualisations can be reused or repurposed to help inform on the design intent, but also enable further discussion to take place with stakeholders or with internal teams. Models are more complex and act as containers for information, which can mature over time. Remember the Environment Agency EA work stages 1 to 7. A model evolved over those work stages to become more detailed and useful. Think of models as building blocks that when combined can produce insights and information that can be extracted into a visualisation to improve and enhance communications with your target audience. Parts or the whole can be reused or repurposed for multiple visualisations. The following three types are relevant to this module. Graphical models, a representation that will show what the physical object would look and how it relates to other components or its context. System and processes. These maps are theoretical description of a system or process to help you further understand how something will function. Data visualization. These provide different ways to present information to help the user interpret and assess the underlying information. The models may be used to represent the whole or part of the object, system, process or data set being modelled. The model may be very detailed or simplified to only capture the essential elements. What is a model in the context of building information modelling? BIM for short. There are two types of model forms in common use by the Environment Agency. These are construction models which represent assets such as office buildings, plant process facilities or defence systems and hydraulic system models which represent fluid systems. 
individual construction models can represent a single discipline, such as architecture, structural or services, which contribute to the formation of the asset. When combined, these individual models become a federated model. The federated model becomes a digital representation of the physical and functional characteristics of an asset. The federated model is a shared knowledge resource for information about an asset forming a reliable basis for decisions during its life cycle, from earliest inception to demolition. A hydraulic model is a mathematical model of fluid flow, such as a river. It is used to analyse hydraulic behaviour. A hydraulic model is created using real-world data, such as geographic data, CAD data and pipeline system data. Each of these is discipline models, which are combined to create a federated model, in this case a digital representation of the real-world water system. The information held in such a model might include topography for landscape. These represent the following ground surface, system loading data from flow metering units and water consumption records or telemetered system flows. You can also incorporate other factors like consumer characteristics, land use data or vehicle traffic counts. We could use a biscuit as a basic example of how federated models can be broken down into their component parts. The 3D model of the biscuit captures the form of the biscuit, describing its 3D geometry digitally. The data is the unseen information associated with the biscuit that is usually featured on the packaging, like the type of biscuit, the ingredients, how many biscuits there are in the package, etc. These provide additional information about the 3D model. Documents may represent other information on the packaging, providing contextual or extended information about the product, such as the manufacturer, when it was created, and the method of how it was made, and its sale-by date. Model files are created by your suppliers in their native authoring tools, for example, CAD files, and stored on their company servers. These may be stored in a common data environment, CDE, where their development, checking and approval may be managed through workflows. Once the information is developed to a suitable level for sharing and review, they will upload to the supplier common data environment. The supplier's project or information manager is responsible for transferring files to the environment agency, CDE submitting them to the relevant Environment Agency project and Information Manager. They check that the file is meeting all defined delivery requirements, like is it in the right format and has the right metadata. If this is confirmed, the manager accepts the file into the employer's CDE. They also make sure it's distributed to the EA project team for their review. A visualisation is a technique used to create an image, a diagram or an animation to convey and communicate a message to a target audience. The use of visualisation can add value to a project by communication of complex information in a more accessible way. The visualisation reduces the need to interpret complex information, improving the clarity for the intended audience on how they will review and comprehend the content. A visualisation promotes a common understanding and enables further dialogue and better engagement. Types of visualisation used by the Environment Agency can be grouped into three main categories. Still visualisations, animated visualisations and interactive visualisations. Within those categories you will find there are various visualisation options available to you which may be appropriate to different project requirements during its life cycle. In this slide, we have a photographic survey image on the left, which is the as-is state of a guardrail as you would see it on site now. The image on the right is a still photo montage that illustrates what it could look like in the future. The montage has applied model information on top of the existing photograph to illustrate the future scenario. 
This type of visualization can be used to increase visual impact for supporting planning applications and stakeholder engagements with the public and residents for schemes improving public areas. The limitation of this type of visualization is that it requires verified photographic survey information and ensuring the 3D visualization software and the image is completed by an experienced and competent editor. Rendering is the process of creating a 3D style image to differing degrees of realism. There are several different types of rendering you might want to use to convey information. A wireframe uses lines and curves to represent the edges of an object without applying colors or textures. These objects can be seen through to provide a conceptual image. A hidden line rendering is like the wireframe representation but only the outlines or edges of surfaces visible from the current viewpoint are displayed. Although there are no colors or textures applied, objects cannot be seen through. In the shaded rendering, the visual elements are rendered with smooth shading but no textures from the materials. Fully rendered means that the visual elements are rendered with smooth shading and textures from materials applied. Photorealism would extend this to be almost indistinguishable from a photograph. Visualizations can be multifaceted to highlight specific details such as exposing internal details to provide additional clarity. For example, cutaways showing rebar locations and form for construction. A still analytical visualization is used to help understand patterns, trends and insights to how an environment might react to certain events. Typically, these types of visualizations are used to better convey technical challenges and are used for inclusion in report and presentation. The visualization is used to explain complex analytical information to stakeholders in a way that is easily understood. For example, the impacts of flooding and how this could affect their community from a hydraulic model. The left visual shows differences in ground levels illustrated by colors, while the right fluvial river floor map visualizes information adapted for flood planning risk. This is a 3D flythrough of a model. It provides a realistic layout of the land, as well as the surface model and what is hidden beneath the ground, so you can visualize and better understand the connection of waterways. This type of visualization is suitable for providing information of the project in a linear format from start to end of the project. The project would use this type of visualization for presentation and publishing online to increase engagement with all stakeholders of the scheme. A 4D construction sequence animation provides interactive insights on how construction work elements come together over time. This visualization visualizes construction program to better communicate complex scheduling activities. It provides the project team with better engagement tool for efficient scenario planning, as well as highlighting and mitigating health and safety risks. A professional animation is more focused than a 3D fly through. It is an excellent way to visualize what the asset will look like when it is built. It aids communication and engagement with project stakeholders and can be used to demonstrate different design solutions. In this example, interactive visualization is used to convey a flood warning for England and has been made available to the public through the gov.uk website. The purpose is to visualize impacts and provides a means of warning of potential flooding that may affect people in specific areas. The user can interact with the visual to drill down further to assess the impact on them, but also find out how to plan for the flood and what to do in a flood. Model also contain data that is embedded within the model itself, which is out of sight of the graphical image that you will not see in a visualization. For this reason, to view the data, you will need to view in specific software that is used to create the model. We call this the authoring tool. This is similar to when you look at a file in Windows Explorer on your PC. 
You can see the icon in the window to show you the file, but it's only when you click File Properties, it is only then that the data is revealed. Models obtain their source information from the shared database and are viewed in the relevant model software. Models are used to view, analyse, interrogate and interpret data to enable better decision making. The visualisations are produced from 2D or 3D models to convey intent and other important information to a variety of audiences. They provide visual clarity to enable better understanding. Another way to describe it is that a model is a visual representation of data. This could be in many forms, such as GIS theoretical models, 3D models, diagrams and charts, etc. The visualisation is an output from the model, a snapshot in time that shows what the model represents but is not linked to any data once the visualisation is created. In the first part of this module, you'll learn the following. 1. Distinguish the difference between a model and a visualisation. 2. Understanding what makes up a federated model. And 3. Recognise different types of visualisations and how they can be used. In Objective 2, we will explore the purpose and need for federating models and different exchange formats. We will also look at environment agency work stages and how the model development correlates with those stages. Finally, we will introduce the visualisation selection tool and explain why and how you would use it. As we have seen in Objective 1, a federated model consists of connected but distinctive individual models. A federated building model is an assembly of distinct discipline models to create a single complete model of the building. Unified individual model files provide a digital representation of the physical asset. To summarise, each designer creates their own model file and shares it with the project team. The lead designer will coordinate all the share model files and combine each individual model file into one, which becomes a federated model. The purpose of federating models is to provide a holistic view of the digital asset or facility. It aids the design coordination by allowing identification and resolution of issues in advance of site work and therefore avoid costly changes during construction. It enables clash avoidance and detection through regular consolidation of models from multiple suppliers and designers earlier in the project. With more data provided and consolidation up front, as well as specifications confirmed and shared, it becomes easier to estimate timings and costings. As information is produced and generated by designers, they use specific and specialised software to provide their models. The purpose of defining exchange formats is to ensure that when information is exchanged, it is suitable for the environment agency to use. The exchange format is defined in the employer's information requirements, the EIR. The suppliers, designers, etc are instructed on how information is to be delivered to the environment agency for it to be useful. A deliverable is an information output which has been agreed between parties to be produced during project stages and exchanged in an agreed format. The use of both open source and native format enables the employer, environment agency, to have the ability to view the information and hold a copy of the native format for future use with other suppliers if necessary. Native file formats are those that are only readable by their own publisher's software and other compatible software. The use of native formats may hamper interoperability if project team members are using different types of software and cannot open exchange files. Coordination files are an essential aspect that enables all parties to collaborate and view information in a standard format. Suppliers, including designers, create their work in native software, also known as proprietary software packages, e.g. Autodesk Revit. However, the complication occurs when other parties do not use the same software type or version, e.g. a designer using Autodesk Revit 2019, and another is using 
ArchieCAD 2019. Therefore, to overcome this obstacle, we ensure within the BEP BIM Execution Plan that all designers export their design to a standard coordination file, and in this instance, it is Navisworks coordination file. This course of action ensures that all parties can view the design information, model files. Coordination file formats such as NWF, NWC and NWD are Autodesk's native format for Navisworks files, which can only be opened in Navisworks. Open source or non-native file formats are formats that can be created and read by multiple software applications. Most common formats are Industry Foundation Class, IFC, which is the most common open source file format used to exchange graphical information and data. Construction Operation Building Information Exchange, COBE, holds asset data in XLSX file format. It is used to transfer Excel worksheets into the Computer Aided Facilities Management, CAFM, System or Computerized Maintenance Management System, CMMS. The levels of detail to be provided in these files are determined by the EIR and the design stages. The benefits of coordinated 3D information include improved collective understanding of design intent. It provides assurance and certainty that project information is fully coordinated and validated. Greater visibility of clashes and early resolution of issues in advance of site work. Enhanced program and cost reporting. In Objective 1, we explained what a visualisation is and now we will introduce you to the EA's Visualisation Selection Tool. The tool comes with a guidance note on how to use it and how to scope your requirements. This bespoke tool was developed to help you identify appropriate visualisation needs for your project specific for lifecycle stages. The tool offers a step-by-step -step process to identifying what you need based on specific and pre-identified outcomes. For example, to support public consultation events. It suggests visualisation products based on your desired outcomes and budgetary constraint of the low, medium and high cost needed to produce a visualisation. The visualisation selection tool is based on a key set of criteria that you input into form such as current work stage and the available budget level, either low, medium or high. The outcome is calculated from these criteria and is a visualisation recommendation that responds to the needs of project. It considers budgetary constraints and level of details associated with the project stage of work for which the visualisation is required. It is a relatively quick process to complete, which in simple steps will help you to establish the type of visualisation that can be created for the project. The visualisation selection tool can be found in the Environment Agency A-Site platform. Use the A-Site built-in search function, which is shown on this video. When selecting a visualisation, it is essential to understand the different forms of mixtures of techniques available. To help determine the type of visualisation, you will need to consider. The design and work stage will determine the type of visualisation available from the current model. The type of issue or information you want to convey and communicate to your audience. Current scheme assumptions or new assumptions not currently captured, for example, materials or tree species to be accounted for or to be introduced. The quality of the object in the visualisation and whether they need to be photorealistic or solid 3D rending. 
the available medium or channels available to communicate with stakeholders or consultees, and other graphical and non-graphical. When you complete the tool, it is vital that the information is transferred from the tool to the PSC documents. This will ensure scope captures for outputs and deliverables for visualization requirements. Please make a PDF copy of the complete visualization selection tool for insertion into the Appendix 2 of the PSC visualization requirements. Distinguish and define what is a federated model and understand purpose including the benefit of the federated model offer. We covered the critical difference of level of definition and level of information and its relevance to EA work stages. We introduce you to the visualization selection tool, why you should use it and the need to scope your visualization requirements for its inclusion in the PSA contract for project delivery. In this objective, we will concentrate on clash avoidance and clash detection. We will explain what they are, when they should be applied, and the benefits of these processes in design development. A clash occurs when elements of different models occupy the same space. A clash may be geometric. For example, ventilation duct passing through structural beam. Or schedule based when different aspects of work that are supposed to be sequential are scheduled to occur together or in reverse. Clashes occur because different disciplines work in their own model without reference to other disciplines. The designers in each discipline don't necessarily know what other designers are doing. So sometimes clashes occur because two or more disciplines end up putting different things in the same space. This problem is resolved by federating different models to detect clashing using the clash detection software. There are two types of clash in federated models. A hard clash is when two objects pass through each other in the same plane. When we imagine clashes, we commonly think of two components occupying the same space. These are often referred to as a hard clash. A column running through a wall or pipework through a steel beam, for example. These kinds of clashes can be time-consuming and costly to put right if only discovered on site. A soft clash occurs when an element isn't given the spatial or geometric tolerances it requires or its buffer zone is breached. For example, a ladder positioned over a floor opening. Another example, an air conditioning unit may require certain clearances around it to allow for maintenance access or safety that the presence of a steel beam in that zone would negate. Given enough object data, computer software can be used to check adherence to relevant regulations and standards. Clash avoidance is a proactive process which ensures that the design decision within the design models are clash free. So think of clash avoidance as an individual designer's quality assurance to avoid clashes during design, or planned proactive coordination processes between disciplines such as may be defined within a volume strategy. Other benefits of clash avoidance are, you can avoid clashes in models from the same discipline by applying internal coordination processes. Clashes between disciplines can be avoided through design strategies and early use of federated models when initiating design. Clash detection is the reactive process of checking all individual models in a single federated model environment. Combining design models from multiple disciplines in a single model file enables further inspection of the multidisciplinary design in coordination review workshops. The lead designer and project manager will agree and assign resolutions to team members to rectify the models for them to become clash free. Clash avoidance is a proactive process to identify potential clashes before they occur. It is a critical step in designer workflow to avoid clashes within their own model files and systematically develop clash-free models ready for coordination with other disciplines. To do this, they leverage the authoring software which has set parameters to identify where a potential clash will occur. Whilst the software offers solution to avoid clashes, it is not to say the design model is completely clash-free when it is federated into a combined model file. 
Clash detection is another workflow that is used to check the design coordinations between different design disciplines. The purpose of clash detection is to identify, inspect and report the design interface clashes in a 3D project model. Using Navisworks clash detective tools to cross-check the 3D model will help reduce the risk of human error and provide design assurance in developing project information model. Both clash avoidance and clash detection should be applied through the project delivery. Articulate the key differences between a clash avoidance and a clash detection. Understand why we need volume strategy and what it sets out. Understand the purpose and benefits of clash avoidance detection and how it supports design development process. In this objective, we will look at how to identify and evaluate existing datasets to ensure they can be used for specific project needs. We will also look back at some visualization examples to show how existing data can be reused to support requirements without the need to recreate the same or similar content. There is some steps you should consider before you commission new data capture or visualization work. Your starting point is to understand what exactly you need at each project stage and what purpose you will use this information for. For example, you might need to understand existing ground conditions for a program of ground works. Another requirement may be to support stakeholder engagement or consultation processes in which you would need to visualize the scheme. You should use the visualization selection tool and the associated guide to help inform your thinking around the type of visualization that you may need. It will also help you better articulate what it is you are looking for, both in terms of outputs required and what information and models you may need to generate this visual. These visualizations could be developed by reusing pre-existing information or models or through the commissioning of new work. Your discovery may start with conversations with your colleagues, review of project case studies and other material that should point you to sources of information generated by others that you can repurpose. You should also search the Environment Agency's A site, CDE, for deliverables from other projects. Understand what you have that is already freely available. This could include similar projects that may have commissioned similar data capture. Use of models produced on a different project for your visualization needs. EA corporate agreements in place to source core data like OS mapping, for example, or other open source data that you can access freely. If there is no pre-existing information, then you can commission new work, but consider what information you have already. In Objective 2, we have identified where to locate the visualization selection tool and how to use it. Leveraging this tool may also help you identify the type of visualization products and what is required to produce them. This will help you understand what to look for in what may already exist and how it can be repurposed or reused. Start with the visualization selection tool. Input the information associated with the project that is the primary desired outcomes, work stage that is EA 1 to 7 and your budget availability. In this scenario, we need to illustrate how the new barrier will enhance safety by protecting people from falling into the river. We use the visualization selection tool to input our requirements that will provide us with the best option. In this case, it is a photo montage. Before commissioning the visualization, we must consider and conduct due diligence with fellow environment agency project managers, co-workers, including checking knowledge management platform to ascertain if there is pre-existing information slash visualization that is available for reuse and can inform of the design intent. If there are no suitable or available visualization, complete the visualization selection tool in its totality and transfer the scope and visualization requirements into the PSC documents. The supplier will create the required visualization. You've completed learning objective four of this module, and you now know and understand how to identify information and data that can be reused with the confidence to maximize and leverage technology tools available to you. 
In this objective, we will focus on the use of Navisworks software to view and review federated models. There are many different model checking tools in the marketplace. However, at the Environment Agency, the chosen model checking tool is Autodesk Navisworks. The Navisworks software is available with the Environment Agency software catalogue. You will need to place a request to your IT administrator to arrange for installation onto your PC. Environment Agency staff will use Navisworks Freedom to view models prepared by the supply chain. Autodesk provides three variations of Navisworks. Navisworks Freedom offers model viewing capability. This is the free version to enable stakeholders to have access to the federated and individual model files curated by the lead designer, BIM coordinator or information manager. Navisworks Simulate offers design simulation and project review functionalities. It is an advanced coordination tool with 4D and 5D analysis, which includes time and cost data. 3. Navisworks Manage offers design all features that Navisworks Simulator does, plus the capability to conduct clash detection, including interface checking and issue management coordination controls. This can be crucial for capturing issues in the design coordination and monitoring the closeout of the issue with the design team. It is typically used by BIM specialists or BIM managers. In many cases, your supplier may have a nominated BIM manager or information manager that will carry out the federation and clash detection, including issued management of the model through the clash report generated in Navisworks Managed. However, there will be times where you will want to have access to the federated model and review progress and understand the clash reporting within the software to track progress and close out of model issues during the work stages. When working with Navisworks, the three basic file formats to be aware of are as follows. NWF file format. When you save to the Navisworks file format, NWF, only a list with pointers to the files currently loaded is saved, along with the scene's environment, the current view, clash results if available, and favourite viewpoints including red lines and comments. To open an NWF file, a Navisworks product is required, such as review, simulate or manage. Not freedom, as well as access to the original CAD files. NWC file format. When you open a CAD file in Navisworks, by default, a corresponding cache file is created called NWC. This contains all of the conversion details required by Navisworks. When you subsequently open that CAD file in Navisworks, it will check to see whether a cache file is available. If it is, then Navisworks will check to see whether the CAD file has been modified since it was last opened in Navisworks. If the file has not been modified, Navisworks will read the cache file, speeding up the loading process and utilising less memory. If the CAD file has been modified, Navisworks will read the CAD file in again and recreate the cache. NWD file format. When you save to Navisworks NWD file, all loaded models, the scene's environment, the current view and favourite viewpoints, including red lines and comments, are all saved to a single file. This is known as publishing a Navisworks file and creates a snapshot of the project. An NWD file is considered a complete file and can be opened in any Navisworks product and the Navisworks Freedom Viewer. The principal file format that all Environment Agency projects will use is the Navisworks NWD. At the end of each work stage, EA1 to 7, all files produced by our supply chain will be available on a site. Within Navisworks, you can export the Clash report, and our recommendation is to export to HTML, tabular format. The reason is that this file can be opened in Microsoft Excel in a tabulated format and with a more readable layout for viewing the Clash report. The Clash report is a static snapshot of what has occurred in the federated model through Clash Review Workshop at a particular point in time. 
it enables the designer to rectify and close out clash as directed by the design team lead. Courtesy of Autodesk for this video. There are lots of resources and training videos for Navisworks on the Autodesk website, and we will use some of these to illustrate some of the topics relevant to this module. You learned earlier in this module how individual models are brought together to create a federated model that forms a digital representation of a physical asset. In this video, Autodesk detail how to complete the federated process through opening a model in Navisworks and then appending each individual model file to eventually create the complete federated model. The video is a silent video. However, there are marks within the video that will identify the step-by-step -step process for model federation. courtesy of Autodesk for this video. There are lots of resources and training videos for Navisworks on the Autodesk website, and we will use some of these to illustrate some of the topics relevant to this module. Let us use Navisworks Manage to open model files and commence the federation process. Once you have successfully completed federating each individual model file into a single federated model, you can commence a validation check of the Unified Model for Clash Detection. You can initiate a validation check of the combined model for clash detection. Navisworks Manage has a clash detective capability. In this video, Autodesk demonstrates how to conduct clash detection test using clash detective for identification and inspection of a federated model for issues. Upon completion of the clash detection test, Navisworks will provide a result of the clash test. This is where you can assign status of the condition of the clashes to individuals or groups for resolution. Finally, you will be able to also export the clash test results in a report that Navisworks will create for you to share with the project team. This can be in the form of a tabular, text or as a viewpoint. It is recommended exporting this to HTML where you can view the clashes in Microsoft Excel.
At the start of Objective 5, we raised awareness of using Navisworks software to view design information in a federated model environment, explain the various coordination file formats to display model information, and where to find single model files from the common data environment. We then explored through a video's courtesy of Autodesk how to open a single model file and then append model files to create a federated model. After that, we looked at Clash Detective to create Clash Detection reports and how to export that report in an Excel format for distribution to the project team for resolution. Throughout this e-learning module, you have learned about visualization and models. You have now learned the key differences between the two terms and how they support better communication between members of the project team and with project stakeholders. As part of your learning, you have the confidence to identify and scope appropriate visualization using the visualization selection tool. Furthermore, you also discovered how individual models when combined form a federated model and know the components of a federated model. We covered principles of how to evaluate and identify data for reuse and understand the essentials for clash avoidance and detection. Finally, we learned how to inspect a federated model and how to review this within Navisworks, including model issues management. To bring you to the end of this e-learning module, there will be a short 15 minute assessment, which will assess your knowledge and understanding of federated models, visualization, and how they can aid your decision making and projects. We wish you good luck and hope you enjoyed this e-learning module.